To build your eclipse simulator, you need some one inch or two and a half centimeter in diameter styrofoam balls, some beads, uh, these are six millimeters, that's about the right size, some round toothpicks, those are a little bit more sturdy than the flat ones, and a meter stick or a yardstick, depending on what you have. The inches side is actually a little bit easier to work with on this, and two uh, clips that you use to hold paper together or something like that. And so, if you got those together, what you do is you take the toothpick and just stick it through the styrofoam ball. This is a little tough, and so for younger kids, you might want to do this part yourself. But for older kids, they should be able to do it just fine. Same thing with the bead. There's a hole already in it, so this just needs to go on the hole through there. And for this scale, if that's the Earth, this would be about the size of the moon. So the scale is pretty good. The Earth and the moon are 30 Earth diameters apart from each other. So if we place one of these clips at zero, or you can use one and place the Earth there, then the moon, if that's at zero, the moon would be at 30 inches. And so I'll put this one here. You can always move that down for your preference. And, oh, moon escaped. And this should be, or this is, the correct spacing for the Earth and the Moon on this scale. And you can get a little creative by painting your Earth up if you want to. Or there are some beads that are 8 millimeters across. These are a little bit too large. The 6 millimeters are much better to use because they're more the appropriate scale. And then what we need to do is go out and find some sunlight. And for a solar eclipse, have the moon's shadow land on the Earth. And for a lunar eclipse, have the Earth's shadow land on the moon. And that will simulate our two types of eclipse. All right, so let's see if we can go out and find some sunlight. Now that we're outside, I'm going to use the shadow that's on the ground to help me line up the two objects. So I'm trying to get the shadow of the bead, which is our acting as our moon, onto the styrofoam ball. And I'm using the shadow on the ground to help me do that. So I want to try to bring it closer. In real life, you can see this pretty clearly, but we got too much reflection from the styrofoam ball. It should look like this, with that arrow pointing at the dark spot, which is the solar eclipse on the Earth. This is a better one. You can even see the umbra and penumbra in real life. It's kind of hard to see here. Now we can also take this and actually flip it around and actually get the shadow of our styrofoam ball, which is the Earth, onto the bead, which is the moon, and create a lunar eclipse. And here you can even talk about why more, it's, more people can see a lunar eclipse when it happens than can see a solar eclipse, just looking at how big the shadows are on the, either the Earth or the moon, and compare those two. Now here, I try to get a much better close-up. You can almost see the shadow of the moon going across that styrofoam ball. You can kind of see it there until it, it's an umbra and penumbra. And again, this shows up really well in real life. And just the camera is having trouble contrasting that brightness of the styrofoam ball and the shadow. And so that's why we're having a little trouble with that. But in real life, you can see it clearly. Now when you're all done with your observing, you can take a small snack bag and take your earth and that clamp and the, uh, the moon and its clamp and put it in a little Ziploc bag and you're ready to go for next year. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps for your uh, lesson about eclipses.